Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, shalom. As you know, I'm David Mensah, Israeli government spokesman for the National Public Diplomacy Directorate. Here in the office of the Prime Minister, it's Tuesday, the 29th of October, day 389 of this war, which was launched against us. Firstly, on the tragic fallen amongst Israel's armed forces, it is with regret that I share with you that since the start of this war, Israel's fallen soldiers have unfortunately risen to 776. Major Guy Yaakov Nezri was 25 years old and from Atalit. Major Nezri was severely wounded 10 days ago in battle against Hamas in northern Gaza, but yesterday unfortunately succumbed to his wounds. First Sergeant Naor Chaimov was 22 years old and from Rosha Ayin. First Sergeant Aviv Gilboa was 21 years old and from Neve Tsuf. First Sergeant Nisim Meital was 20 and from Khadera. And Captain Yonatan Keren was just 22 years old and from Moledet. All these boys tragically fell fighting Hamas in northern Gaza. As the Prime Minister said just this week, speaking, I think, for the entire nation, we stand in awe of the heroism of the fallen the heroism of their families, families put through indescribable suffering uh, and grief and pain uh, that cannot be uh, described. We are in the midst of an existential and difficult war, a war that exacts painful prices from all of us. May our fallen uh, be blessed and be remembered in our hearts always. Now an update from uh, those battles in northern Gaza. Our defense forces are decisively fighting Israel's attempts to regroup. Uh, our defense forces are decisively fighting Hamas's attempts to regroup in Jabalia. Uh, over the past day, our forces have eliminated 40 terrorists in ground and aerial strikes, taking apart terror infrastructure. Uh, the IDF faces Hamas terrorists dressed as civilians. Uh, which is a war crime trying to plant explosives near our troops. But these terror cells have also been eliminated. In Rafa too, IDF ground troops have directed IAF in a strike, uh, the Israeli Air Force in a strike on a number of terrorists in the area. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, the case against UNRWA. Uh, now, as you will have seen last night, the Knesset, Israel's parliament, approved legislation to cease the operations of UNRWA inside Israel with, overwhelming, with an overwhelming majority of 92 to 10 votes. The 120-seat Knesset voted to sever ties with the organization. For months now, we've shared with you that UNRWA is tainted by terrorism. To put it simply, UNRWA perpetuates the conflict. Why? because Hamas have effectively infiltrated UNRWA. Now, this is of utmost importance. Israel will continue to work with other UN international organizations to ensure that aid reaches Gazan residents, but not uh, to the terrorists. Our message is clear today. Yes to humanitarian aid, but no to aid for terrorism. The UNRWA organization is infected with terrorism, unfortunately, it is beyond repair. Here are the five key reasons of why we have come to this conclusion. Number one, UNRWA employees have been exposed as the terrorists themselves. They are often the same people. The terrorists are also UNRWA employees. Number two, UNRWA buildings have been used as a cover for rocket launching sites. Number three, UNRWA schools have been hijacked as dens of incitement and pro-terrorist education. You know, every Hamas terrorist went to an UNRWA school. And UNRWA buildings double as havens for terrorists and weaponry. And finally, number five, UNRWA perpetuates the refugee crisis. Now, if you contrast UNRWA with the UN High, Commission for, High Commissioner for Refugees, the UNHCR, it focuses on resettling refugees UNRWA, on the other hand, inculcates Gazans that they will eventually erase Israel. 
So UNRWA perpetuates the refugee crisis across generations. It considers millions, millions of descendants of original refugees, uh, many of whom have citizenship elsewhere, as refugees blocking a long-term resolution. The conclusion, the sad conclusion, is obvious. UNRWA must be replaced with organizations that are not infected with terrorism. Know this, though. A state that continues to fund on UNRWA is actively helping an organization that is harming the region and its future. Now, finally, an update from COGAT getting aid into uh, Gaza. Yesterday, 100 trucks went in uh, to Gaza laden with food and other humanitarian aid, 49 through Kerem Shalom and 51 through the Eres crossing. A total of 1,086,000 tons of aid have uh, gone in in total. Hamas wanted a humanitarian crisis. Israel has prevented one, and it is still our objective to make sure that one does not occur. And still, our daily reminder that 625 trucks of aid are waiting to be distributed and to be picked up on the Gazan side of Kerem Shalom by UN aid agencies. Since the beginning of this war, food and medication and vaccines have been delivered daily with no limits on quantities. The polio vaccination program has, been, has seen Israel cooperating with the World Health Organization and UNICEF to prevent a polio outbreak in Gaza and the entire region. So that's the end of our briefing today. Apologies for the technical problems. I'll now take your questions, which you should put in the chat uh, together with your outlet, please. Apologies again for the issues. Okay, first question here I can see is from Jane Merrick from the I newspaper in London. What contact has the government had from the UK, US and European governments over the ban on UNRWA? Uh, have those countries expressed their disapproval, disapproval of the Prime Minister to the Prime Minister directly? Uh, thank you for that, Jane. I've seen reports of a, a letter which has been written uh, but I haven't actually seen uh, the physical evidence of that letter. I've only seen um, those reports. But let me just make this clear on UNRWA. Let me give you some more evidence, Jane, which will probably be useful to you in, in terms of why the Israeli parliament has come up with this decision. Just last week, one of UNRWA staff members, a man called Mohammed Abu Itiwi, was eliminated. The Secretary General of the United Nations, uh, Mr. Guterres, he condemned the killing of this man. Only one problem. This man actually commanded the Hamas Nova Music Festival attack on October the 7th. He actually attacked and kidnapped innocent Israelis who hid in a bomb shelter near Kibbutz Re'im. So, the United Nations, instead of taking action against this man, back in July, when the list was given to the United Nations, Guterres actually eulogized him. Now, we've given you a whole bunch of reasons, and I've got a whole bunch more why our UNRWA is not fit for purpose and is a front uh, for Hamas. Um, I've given those, and I can share more with you if you wanted. Uh, okay, next question is from Joel Pollock. Uh, from Breitbart News, Iran says it's going to respond to Israel. Does Israel uh, believe Iran still has missile capabilities? Uh, thank you for that question. Uh, yes, Joel, we do. We know that, is uh, that uh, Iran has missile capabilities, but our message to um, Iran has been uh, reiterated by the Prime Minister uh, just yesterday, and uh, in terms of uh, reiterating it, um, just three weeks ago, the Prime Minister said that uh, we eliminated uh, Iran's uh, greatest emissary, that's the mass murderer Hassan Nasrallah. After that, Iran attacked Israel with hundreds of ballistic missiles. No other country has received a barrage such as the one we received on the 1st of October. The attack failed, though, thanks to our defensive capabilities in conjunction with our allies. We then promised that, uh, as the Prime Minister said, Iran would be answered firmly, and the answer came in the early hours of Saturday morning. Uh, the promise was kept. Our Air Force attacked throughout and deep 
into Iran. Uh, we severely damaged Iran's defensive capabilities and their capacity and its ability to produce missiles aimed at us, but they do still have missile capability. Um, we've made our points very, very clear on Iran. Uh, the Prime Minister's made them clear, many ministers in the government have made them clear, uh, and um, we know precisely what Iran's capabilities are, and you can be sure that we will defend ourselves. Iran has made a pledge to, the, the Iranian regime has made a pledge to destroy this country, and we simply will not sit around and wait for that to happen. Next question is from, okay, if you just scroll down, just scroll down. Okay, that could be, okay, Melanie Lidman, do you have any details on how the UNRWA bill will be uh, implemented? Uh, thank you. Um, so, Mel, on that uh, question uh, about details of how the UNRWA bill will be um, uh, implemented, uh, the Prime Minister's made clear that uh, the Knesset has given a 90-day uh, process now to begin the process of, um, of cutting our links with UNRWA, and uh, in that sense, uh, it now uh, means that UNRWA is part of the past. Um, it was part of the problem of this war. UNRWA members took part in the massacre. Now it is time, in terms of the future, for the international community, uh, first and foremost, the United Nations, to rethink and do what's right in order to really be, be able to help Palestinians instead of just sticking to former ideas uh, of an UNRWA which was infiltrated, taken over, and eventually massively misused by the terrorists. So Israel wants uh, the flow of aid to continue to uh, Gazans. Uh, that is our priority. We've made that clear. We'll work with other UN agencies and other international agencies, but UNRWA, unfortunately, is a front for Hamas, and we've made clear what the reasons why we believe that. Julia Frankel from AP, how is Israel planning on maintaining aid flow to Gaza? Will it replace UNRWA and hand aid delivery to COGAT or subcontract out to private companies? Can you please provide some examples of proposals on the table? Thank you for that question, uh, Julia. I think I've answered that question. It was Melanie's question at AP, also from AP, who asked me the same uh, question, and I've answered that one. Um, next question from NPR, Itai Stern. It seems like the Israeli establishment didn't find a body that will replace uh, UNRWA. Who will be responsible to spread the aid in the near future? Uh, thank you for that question, uh, Itai. As I just uh, mentioned a moment ago, um, uh, on, on the future of uh, UNRWA, look, um, you know, UNRWA is part of the past. We've made that crystal clear now. It's part of the problem. You know, the definition of insanity is repeating the same activity and expecting a different outcome. UNRWA members took part in the massacre. So it is time for people that really care about Gazans, not about perpetuating this conflict, not about telling uh, Gazans that eventually, you know, we'll be able to push Israel off the face of the earth. Their dream of from the river to the sea will come true and uh, UNRWA will help and sustain uh, Gazans until that dream comes true. No more. We are working towards a new beginning now. We're not going back to another Gaza war in 18 months or two, or two years' time. Now is the time for the international community, first and foremost the UN, Okay, to rethink and do what's right in order to be of real assistance to the Palestinians. Uh, the, uh, the, the model of UNRWA just simply does not work. So instead of just sticking to their uh, former ideas which have failed, UNRWA were infiltrated wholeheartedly uh, by Hamas. We've given you that evidence. They were taken over uh, and massively misused by the terrorists. So it's time for a new beginning for providing aid to uh, Gazans. Uh, and ultimately allowing Gazans to be self-sufficient. Okay, that's the last question now. Apologies again for the uh, issues w that we've had. Um, uh, so you're asking, sorry, there's another last question here. Uh, um, you're asking, Mel, so Julia Frankel from uh, AP, uh, you're asking again, what concrete proposals is Israel considering to maintain the aid flow to Gaza, how practically 
uh, will Israel get humanitarian aid into Gaza without UNRWA? So, Julia, uh, I think I've answered your question, but let me provide a little bit more uh, if you're asking, as you're asking me to do that right now. One of the points which uh, international media very rarely pick up on is the sheer inefficiency of UNRWA. Again, this point is never, or I never see this point uh, made in the, in the media. They are an inefficient organization. Why? Because they've been hijacked, uh, but they've been infiltrated by uh, Hamas. And I make this point every single day, and you guys never, almost never report it. For months now, there have been 625 truck loads of aid stuck on the Gazan side of Kerem Shalom. You never report this. Why isn't this aid being picked up? Constantly we hear about issues of uh, not enough aid into Gaza, and we've tried. There is no ceiling on the amount of it, uh, uh, aid which is, uh, can be sent in. If international aid agencies and donor countries want to send it in, once we've checked it, as, as is our right to do, uh, we'll get it in. Uh, but UNRWA have been wholeheartedly uh, inefficient. Uh, we are working with other organizations like UNICEF and the World Health Organization and other organizations that have a, a, a better record on distributing aid. But of course, President Biden made clear at the start of this conflict that if aid was misappropriated to serve the terrorists, the aid would stop going in. That has never happened. Now, we've had to take this action. In fact, the Knesset has taken the action. We've, we've made the case why we have taken this action. And ultimately, we will ensure that a more efficient uh, a replacement for UNRWA takes its, uh, takes its role, not one which is infiltrated by, um, uh, by uh, the terrorist organization. So, you know, those, tara, those Hamas tunnels under UNRWA, no more. Okay, if we want a better future for Gazans, no more. Weapon storage in UNRWA schools, no more. Uh, you know, staff being both in Hamas and UNRWA. Don't forget, uh, Sinwar, Sinwar's broad bodyguards had UNRWA credentials on them. Of course, UNRWA said, and Mr. Lazzarini uh, said, oh, they were faked. We, uh, okay, really, how convenient, how convenient. The hundreds of names of employees never of UNRWA employees, also Hamas operatives, never properly, um, never properly uh, investigated. What about uh, Suhail al-Hindi, the former chairman of, UNRWA of the UNRWA staff union, union, also being a member of Hamas? The UNRWA curriculum, you know, almost every single school inside Gaza was controlled and taught with textbooks used by UNRWA. What was in those textbooks? The glorification of martyrdom, incitement to violence, that it's either victory, jihad, or death, glorifying, no more. Gazans are not going anywhere, Israel is not going anywhere, but we must provide a better future for ordinary Gazans, but UNRWA simply perpetuates uh, their misery. And don't forget the, the real funding uh, problems that we've had, the current funding structure for UNRWA, there's very, very little uh, adequate oversight and there is much misuse of funds uh, by Hamas, of course. And remember, these employee arrests, many UNRWA workers have been arrested for involvement in terrorist activities with their cases being highlighted by our security services. But we've given hundreds of names, but they're never properly, prob uh, properly investigated. We just get messages from UNRWA saying, we haven't received any names. They do not tell the truth. The construction and infrastructure. How is it possible that Hamas construction, including the tunnel systems, occur near, sometimes directly underneath UNRWA sites? The UNRWA headquarters in Gaza was directly above the Hamas server farm, the Hamas server intelligence farm. They were directly above. We shared, and the IDF has shared pictures of, we shared electricity, uh, that the electricity uh, fuse boxes going uh, into the uh, UNRWA headquarters and also down below ground to service Hamas. It is impossible, 
it is impossible to think that this was without the knowledge of UNRWA. And of course, giant portions of UNRWA's budget come from international donors, well-meaning international countries who are uh, hard-earned, tax-paying money, wanting to support ordinary Gazans, their funds misallocated. And when we call for reform, when we advocate for reform, UNRWA uh, uh, tell us that, you know, of course, you're just trying to dismantle this, this organization. Well, now that is true. We are uh, having no more to do with this organization. This is a, uh, the Knesset has voted on it. It is our national parliament. It was 92 votes to 10. That means that there was cross-party support, overwhelming support from across left, right, and center from Zionist uh, parties inside the Knesset, inside the 120-person uh, seat Knesset for this issue. Simply perpetuating this issue and hanging on to UNRWA is just perpetuating the conflict. We're trying to put an end to the conflict, a better future for Gazans, a brighter future for them, where they are not educated to hate us, to see their future as killing Jews as a way to uh, freedom. That is not the way to freedom. Gazans are not going anywhere. Israelis are not going in any, anywhere. We will live together, but ultimately in a future, uh, in, a, in a Gaza, where um, their leadership and um, and their support from the outside world, from the United Nations, does not seek to destroy this country. Okay, um, so that's the last question. I think I've answered all the questions. Thank you again for joining us. There'll be another briefing this time tomorrow. Uh, in the meantime, apologies again for the uh, technical problems we've had. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye-bye.